Well, well, good evening. I am north of town. Started out my day, took Carl over there, ran in and got my last load of fertilizer for the year. I think it's the last load anyways. Then I got home, grabbed the drill, Gus and the drill here, and we headed over north of town. This is our uh, farthest field away from the farm. And we try to like to get over here and get it in one day. So we usually leave it till last, also because it's one of the lower fields. But uh, right now I am checking my seed. So there was a YouTube video I was watching where Buddy was like, yeah, we painted the bottom of our tank so we could tell how much canola was left in there. And then I was like, that is genius. So I climbed in there with a Sharpie and I traced, I didn't draw that crooked, I traced where the canola was. So I can roughly have an idea that there's about one bag left in there. And I need, I need to go to there. Like two rounds out from there. So I need, I need another bag and the bag truck is gone. But I have an emergency bag that I leave riding here it's for, uh, it's for emergency. So I'm going to throw that in and then we'll get going. That is one of the uh, unfortunate parts of seeding canola. When you get to the end, like your last field like this is and your last little bit, you don't want to have like a bunch, a bunch too much seed in your tank. Now, if you're watching this and you can't understand that and you say like, oh, why don't you just fill it up? And then, well, you buy the canola by the bag. It's about six probably probably the lowest you can get now is about 580 bucks a bag so if you just filled that up it would cost you a fortune and uh you can't put it back in the bag and, and take it back right so you'd have to store it for the year and that wouldn't be a good idea so you try to be efficient as you can also it's like a point of pride if you can seed the correct amount of acres with the correct bags required generally you can't but well, we're back in the tractor here now. Uh, I got that much. Oh, it just flashed out. It was there. Got that much canola seed. I'm thinking it's good enough for around 15 acres. And I'm thinking I got about 12 acres left to go. So I'll have to seed over a little bit, but that's no big deal. Um, as I was driving around, I was thinking, I wonder what acres I was the last time I did a video. And I think it was probably around 1,000, 1,100. So we put in like 800 acres since then. We've been just going, going, going. And uh, because of that, there hasn't been any time really to make YouTube content. And the last week or so, we've had a ton of new subscribers to the channel, which uh, definitely appreciate that. Welcome if you're a new subscriber. Um, and I mean, if you're not a subscriber and you're watching the video, consider it because that's the best, uh, best way to help us. A small YouTube channel like mine is to uh, subscribe to the channel, click the like button, leave some comments share it with your friends all of that is very very much appreciated but uh, I had posted a video about the hydraulic issues I was having with Gus this tractor here and uh, lots of people had ideas had suggestions that was awesome I'm assuming some of them were new subscribers because I hadn't seen them before so I got to thinking there must be a bunch of uh, new subscribers that are fellow farmers so when I was driving around watching this piece of garbage GPS be a piece of garbage I thought, you know what, that would be a good video. That's inside the tractor content. I should ask people what they run for GPSs. So this is our most hateful one, and I believe it's called a PLM, in, it should be called a POS, but it's a PO, PLM IntelliSteer. It's an integrated unit, so there's no external motor, there's no internal motor. It's driven by the valves, hydraulic valves, there's a control somewhere, and uh, that's what steers the tractor. Programming it, sort of similar to the 250 and the 500 and the 750 that I have uh, in regards to that terrain compensator there must be one somewhere measures your roll and your pitch and everything like that so how you do that if you're not familiar with it this this has a pretty good walkthrough right on the screen you just idle your tractor up and then push the button and it does its calibration and then you turn the tractor around and park it back on the same spot 180 degrees <clears throat> push the button again and then it measures left to right forward to back then there's some other calibrations where you start going down the field and it'll shoot off to the left and then it'll shoot off to the right and then you can do some stuff in the screen here for how fast it corrects or how many degrees of angle and and it, you know there's, there's quite a bit to it however this tractor hasn't worked since 
since the day we bought it. We bought it on an auction sale, um, and it, it, it didn't it didn't drive straight from the day that the guy unloaded off the truck. So we've had the tech out, I think, two or three times into this tractor, and, and every time they leave telling us, oh yeah, it's calibrated and it's good. Uh, of course, that's nothing new. We have four other systems. One is an integrated John Deere system in our sprayer. That has been a flawless system. It just works. Um, but then we also have a 250, a 500, and a 750. The 250 and the 500, they have external motors. The 750 has the steering wheel with the motor inside of it. So it's not, it's not integrated. It still has a motor, but it's, you know, I guess it's, it's half integrated. It's like a cyborg thing. Let me get turned around here. Oh, all right. Moved around. Everything's turning green, I hope. Bang, bang, bang. Awesome. So the 250, the 500, the 750, they all came from the same dealer. Um, our 250, we bought it new with that TJ380 tracker. So that's a 2006 GPS unit in a 2006 tracker. We told them, you guys hook it up because, I mean, GPS was actually fairly new at that point. I'm not sure when they came out, but in our area, they were still new around 2006. If you guys had them, that was about it. Uh, so they came out, they set it all up, and it was a total disaster. The tractor would miss from side to side. It would it would do this going down the field. Uh, it was It was totally... It was a should have been a total embarrassment on behalf of the dealer, but they were just like no big deal. And I think actually at one point they told us we should may as well bring it back because we probably weren't smart enough to handle it anyways. Um, why we still go back to that dealer is beyond me. But we do like the blue tractor. We don't like the technology, but we like the tractor. So uh, it was about seven years um, because. I mean, how much, how much do you really have time to fart around with it, right? I mean, you, you fire up your drill and you want to get seating so you don't pay too much attention. And then everything's seated, so you park your four-wheel drive tractor because you don't have any summer follow to do anymore because we don't do that because we're efficient enough we can get everything seated. Um, so then when the... We, at that point, we hadn't moved it into our combine yet. But even if we had, you're not going to sit there and, and not combine. You're going to just go, right? So... It took about seven years of fighting with it before I finally found a few key settings that weren't done. That was just thank thankful to some online forums and stuff like that. And uh, I got it figured out. Once I figured out that 250, uh, or, sorry, that was the 500 that we bought first. Once I figured out the 500, it was no problem. The 250 we bought, we put that in our 2394 for spraying before we had our self-propelled sprayer. Um, and that, you know, it, it worked well. I, I had that one figured out. Um, and then we bought our 750 and that's in our swather. We bought that swather new, so we just figured, I mean, that's kind of the way it is now. When you buy a piece of equipment, it may as well come with a GPS in it um, because they're not as easy to move as they were advertised. They are easy to move. We do take the one out of our TJ and we put it in our one combine, but they're, it's, not, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do. So uh, <clears throat> those systems have all been good. The 250, the 500, the 750. That John Deere 20, I think it's a 2360 monitor, so whatever, G, G Star, G Starfire 3000. I don't know much about John Deere uh, GPSs, um, but it, it's also been great. This thing in this T9505, this 2013 PLM IntelliSteer, I have never seen anything be such a piece of garbage that has been looked at by a tech three or four times and just continually told that it, that's the way it's going to work. There's no way that that's the way it can work. When you're someone like me who tries to promote or brag up GPSs whenever the conversation comes up, and with the old boys it comes up quite a bit, right? When they're trying to tell you, well, we never needed it before, blah, blah, blah. They're right, they never needed it before. But if you can get your drill set that each pass you move 12 inches or eight inches away from the, from the previous pass, that you're like 100% efficient then, right? Because it's a 12 inch spacing drill. So ideally, you should go down, you should move over 12 inches and go back up, right? So there's that 12 inch space in between. Um, I like to try to overlap like one shank, so, the, and it's because these these things wobble like this. But uh, when, you're, uh, when you're trying to explain your point, make your case about um, saving money by having it, it's hard to do when you, when you know in your head that you've spent more time 
resetting lines and like overlapping the whole thing five feet because when you went down it was going like this so the only way to get all of that is to reset it and then go straight so every one of these you're overlapping and every one of these you're not and then you're overlapping and then you're not if you run a gps you know what i'm saying so what the for those who do run GPS, as those who do know what I'm talking about, what do you run? What do you like? What do you have? Do you have good response with your dealers? Uh, is there good service? There is a new a new guy around up here. I don't know if he's subcontracted to our dealer or if he's hired on directly. Apparently, he's quite a guru when it comes to this stuff. That is going to be my next thing. Is I'm going to have to phone him and get him to come out and look at this because I'm. I'm exhausted. I've been everywhere. I've changed things. I've, I've read as much as I can in the book. The book's not very helpful. I've been online. There must be something so polluted and so corrupted in this in this software that it just it cannot work. So it, it's it's quite disappointing. It is. It's a really nice tractor, otherwise. But uh, when you're when you're going down the field and you just shoot over two and a half feet and then shoot back two and a half feet three or four rounds later. You, you, it takes away all your efficiencies um, and then as you start to fight with it now you're starting to take away your uh, operator fatigue reduction by enhancing your level of frustration so believe it or not i did try not to ramble on too terribly much about that but i didn't want to get my point across about uh, gps's the fact that i do mostly like them and think they're a benefit but sometimes in this particular case probably would be better not to have it as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all on the next one.